Welcome to Palectronics Education Electronic Book Tutorial 3 Die Directifiers. This tutorial is presented by Dr. Firuzare. So, in this case, we have to find the capacitance value in a single phase die directifier. So, when we have a single phase die directifier, it means we have AC to DC converter that means if the line voltage is AC at 50 Hertz the output voltage across this terminal is rectify we have full wave rectifier so when this output is connected to only a resistive load this is the voltage waveform but because the output voltage fluctuates significantly so this type of voltage waveform is not suitable for different applications so that's why we basically put the capacitor in parallel with the load so in this case the output voltage will be something like this voltage waveform so when the input voltage is root of 2 times of 240 times of sinus 2 pi t over t that means this peak value is root of 2 times of 240 if the voltage across the capacitor is fully charged at this point and then discharge at this point that means the ripple across the capacitor which is defined as 2 delta V can be calculated based on the capacitance value and other parameters let's look at the voltage waveform so let's redraw the voltage waveform so if this is a voltage waveform suppose that charging time is much less than discharging time that means suppose this time is negligible compared to this time because this is is basically half a cycle so in this case if this is a voltage across the capacitor that means this is a voltage across the resistor or across the load so suppose that the average of this voltage is V max minus delta V because if this voltage is V max which is root of 2 times of 240 and if this ripple is peak to peak is 2 delta V so this average is V max minus delta V so now let's look at the load current so output voltage divided by resistor is output current and in this case we concentrate on current through the resistor suppose that the ripple is negligible so in this case the output voltage is Vm minus delta V over R now we can write the equation for capacitor C dVc over dt is current through the capacitor so if you look at the circuit diagram for the time that capacitor is discharged through this resistor 
the current through the capacitor is basically load current. So now we can simplify the equation. That means C times of so delta V means that the voltage is decreasing so delta V from this peak down to this point is minus 2 delta V over delta T basically is this half a cycle that means T over 2 equals to current through the capacitor when the capacitor is discharged is basically um, minus IR or C times of 4 delta V over T with this, with this sign is minus equals to and because here we have load current is minus Vm minus delta V over R. Now we can simplify this equation. So if I rewrite it again then we have 4 Cf delta V which is equal to Vm minus delta V over R or 4 Cf R delta V equals to Vm minus delta V. So finally delta V 1 plus 4 R C F equals to Vm and delta V is Vm over 1 plus 4 RCF. So for this example we can find capacitance value in terms of these parameters. For example, in this case we can find R which is basically output voltage divided by current and if we have power we can find based on this equation output square divided by power so here we can find the resistance value and then in this equation suppose that the grid frequency is 50 Hertz so if Delta V should be kept at 20 volts then in this equation we know Vm because Vm is root of 2 times of 240 so that means in this equation we know Vm, we know delta V, we know frequency and we know the resistance value then we can find the capacitance value for this application. So in this example we have a diode rectifier which is connected to a pure inductive load. We consider pure inductive load as a current source so the point is that the input current is not sine wave so the input current is a square wave and this square wave basically consists of sine wave plus harmonics so the point is that we have to find this harmonics. So in order to find the input current and its harmonics we can use Fourier analysis that means if input current can be defined in terms of different sine and cosine terms that means in this case I in 
equals to constant value which is DC part plus sum of sine and cosine terms which is basically a n cosine 2 pi t over t times of n plus b n sinus 2 pi t over t times of n so the case is that we have to find these factors to be able to define this current in terms of cosine and sine functions so a n which is basically a DC part for a periodic signal is 2 over t times of this integral over one cycle times of i, I in t dt and a n is 2 over t this integral over one cycle which is i in t cosinus 2 pi t over t times of n dt and bn is 2 over t over this integral which is i in sinus 2 pi t over t times of n dt so in order to find the these factors we need to look at the input current basically input current is change from positive I out down to negative I out and because each interval is T over 2 that means the DC part is 0 so for this case this DC part is 0 that means A0 is 0 and now we can find these factors so basically we can rewrite again and sometimes because of symmetry we can simplify the equation so let's concentrate on a n so a n is 2 over t so we can split the interval into 0 up to t over 2 in this case load current is appears that means input current equals to i out times of cosine 2 pi t over t times of n dt plus 2 over t times of t over 2 up to this one which is upper limit times of in this case load current appears in different direction that means input current is minus i out times of cosine 2 pi t over t n dt so now we can simplify again that means 2 i out over t times of integral of cosine is sine so t over 
2 pi n times of sinus 2 pi t over t times of n and the limits of integral is between 0 and t over 2 plus same for the second terms except we have negative here that means we have minus 2i out over t times of t over 2 pi n and integral of cosine is sine which is sinus 2 pi t over t times of n and this limits of integral is t over 2 up to t so these two terms are 0 because sinus 2 pi t over 2 divided by t times of n equals to sinus pi n and for any n we have 0 and lower limit means sinus 0 which is always 0 in this equation sinus 2 pi t over t times of n equals to sinus 2 pi n which is 0 so in this case we can see that a n is 0 while we have to find b n so for b n we have 2 over t times of split the integral into two different intervals t over 2 now for the first half a cycle input current is i out times of sinus 2 pi t over t times of n dt plus the second half a cycle that means the limits of integral is between t over 2 and t and in the second half a cycle input current is minus i out times of sinus 2 pi t over t times of n dt so in this case we have 2 i out over t times of integral of sinus is minus cosinus and we have to consider this factor that means minus t over 2 pi n and the integral is cosinus 2 pi t over t times of n in which the limits of integral is between is 0 and t over 2 plus the second term 2 times of minus i out over t times of this integral which is minus t over 2 pi n times of cosinus 2 pi t over t times of n and the limits of integral is t over 2 and the upper limit is t so now we can simplify this equation so in this case we have minus 2 i out so this one and this one can 
be cancelled over 2 pi n so put the upper limit that means cosinus 2 pi t over 2t times of n minus cosinus 0 and the second term minus times of minus is plus this t and this t we can cancel it's 2 i out over 2 pi n and the limits of integral cosinus 2 pi t over t times of n minus cosinus 2 pi t over 2t times of n so in this case we have we can simplify again so now we can simplify this equation that means in this case we have minus i out over pi n and in this term cosine n pi minus cosine 0 is 1 plus i out over pi n cosinus 2 pi n minus cosinus pi n so now we have to simplify based on odd and even number suppose n is an even number so in this case this term is always 1 that means 1 minus 1 this term is 0 so this term is always 1 and this one is 1 as well so they can cancel each other so that means this term is 0 but if n is an odd number then cosine n pi is minus 1 that means this term will be minus 2 so minus 2 times of this this factor is plus 2 i out over pi n plus and in this case this term is always 1 but this term is minus 1 minus times of minus is plus so again this whole term is plus 2 so 2 times of this term is 2 i out over pi n so we have 4 i out over pi n for example in this case b1 is 4 i out over pi or b3 is 4 i out over pi 3 welcome to power electronics education electronic book computer lab introduction to sim power system this computer lab is presented by Dr. Firuzare. In this section, you learn how to simulate a power electronics using Simulink Sim Power. So, when you run MATLAB, you need to run Simulink. Then you can open a new file. When you open a new file, we need to actually grab different components. In Simulink library, here you can see that we have Sim Power system. This is suitable for simulation of power electronic circuits so when you select this module we have different components for example we can drag and drop this diode if we need for example power supply we can select electrical source and then we can drop AC voltage if we need for example RLC then we can get this RLC 
in order to measure the voltage and current we can select voltage prop or voltage measurement and current measurement so now we have the components now we can draw a circuit diagram so in this case we can move the mouse on different pins left click and then connect it to another pin then that's a connection between this power supply and this side of diode and then left click and connect it to the other point click it move it then we can connect this pin to the power supply in two steps in order to measure the voltage across the for example output we can connect this positive pin to this terminal and this negative to this point if you need to measure for example current through this diode select this line delete and then put the current probe in series with the diode so now we have two signals current and voltage so at this stage we need a scope in order to measure the output voltage and current so in this case we need to actually get the scope so in the simulic library when you select things then you can drag and drop scope here because this scope has one input double click and then you can define here number of inputs number of channels so now we can select two inputs so now we can connect it to these channels so this is a circuit diagram then we can define the simulation time for example instead of 10 seconds we can define it to 0.1 so now we can change the component for example instead of RLC double click here then you can define different elements for example here you can select only resistive load change the impedance up to 100 ohms double click on power supply you can change the frequency for example to 50 and then you can run the simulation so basically here double click so when you zoom the waveform here you can see that this is the current waveform this is the voltage waveform welcome to power electronics education electronic book computer lab introduction to plex this computer lab is presented by Dr. Firuzari. In this section you learn how to simulate a power electronic circuit in Plex. When you run MATLAB you need to run Simulink. Plex is a library in Simulink so when you open the library then you can see Plex as one of the libraries here. Click it here in order to draw a circuit diagram you need to basically open a new file then you need to basically have a circuit here drag and drop double click and on this window you can draw your circuit diagram so basically we need for example components suppose we need DC source or AC source drag and drop here we need for example diode so from component switches we can select diode and then we need to have passive components for example resistor and we need to measure the current and voltage so that's why we need signals here we need to get output signal then we need to have meter which basically can measure voltage and this one can measure current then we can concentrate on drawing that means in this case we can rotate this one by right click on this component format and then rotate then left click on this pin and connect it to this terminal 
we can connect the voltage probe across power supply and then we can connect the resistor through this current probe so this is the circuit diagram the point is that if you look at the block basically because we have one terminal so we have one output so if I copy that means push the control key and then left click and move it then you can copy the terminal so here you can see we have two outputs while we have two terminals we can connect one of them to the voltage then we can connect this one to the current so this circuit is ready for simulation welcome to Pi Electronics Education electronic book computer lab 3 dodge rectifiers this computer lab is presented by Dr. Firuzare this is a single phase half wave dodge rectifier this is basically the dot this is the load and this is the input we can measure the voltage across the input using this voltage probe we can measure the input current through this current probe we can also measure the output voltage and also voltage across the dot using this voltage probe so basically here we have resistive inductive battery and capacitive load so in order to simulate this case for example for pure resistive load we need to remove these components double click then we can select either zero or select open circuit then we can double click here and select resistive load double click on this DC supply change it to zero now this circuit diagram is ready for simulation so by clicking the start simulation has done double click on a scope so here we can see the input voltage is sine wave the output voltage is half wave rectifier that means the second half wave is not up here across the road the voltage across the dot is here and this is the load current so now we can simulate the battery charger with the current limiter this resistor as a current limiter so we can double click on this DC voltage change it to for example 150 volts then run the simulation double click on a scope so here we can see that for example the dot conducts when the input voltage actually increase at this voltage level which is basically 150 so this is the current through the battery so that means the average over one cycle is the energy and current delivered to the resistor and to the battery so if we need to change the resistor to the inductor double click here change it to an inductive load then we can put for example 10 milli Henry run the simulation double click here we can zoom it and here we can see that for example when the input voltage is getting negative at this point basically dot conducts the reason is that the current through the inductor is not zero so at this point because the current through the dot is zero that's why dot is turned off now we can simulate this dot rectifier with RC load double click here select capacitor change it to one millifarad then change the battery down to zero now we have to change also that one to a resistor so it's ready for simulation so finish then double click here so now we can see that for example the over the first half a cycle because the voltage across the capacitor is zero so that's why we have inrush current this inrush current may damage the system but after that one the voltage across the capacitor is discharged and then over this short time the capacitor is charged 
so that's why this is the input current so then the capacitor is discharged so we can see that the DC voltage has ripple and in order to control the ripple reduce the ripple we can increase the capacitance value. this is a three phase full wave dodge rectifier here we can see that there are six dots we have phase A, phase B, phase C and this is the output load we can measure the voltage across the output and also we can measure the voltage across the dot and also current through phase A we can simulate this one and here we can see the output voltage and current for example this is three phase input voltage this is rectify output voltage and this is the voltage across the dot and this is current through phase A so here we can see that phase A is not sine wave especially with resistive load the current has been affected that means in high power we may inject significant harmonics into the power system welcome to Power Electronics Education electronic book computer lab 3 dodge rectifiers this computer lab is presented by Dr. Firuzare. In this section we can look at different simulations using Plex. So this is a circuit diagram for full bridge single phase dodge rectifier. When you double click you can see the circuit diagram. So basically this is input voltage with this voltage probe. We can measure the input current. This is voltage probe to measure voltage across the dot this is full bridge dodge rectifier and this is the RLC load together with battery we can measure load current and also we can measure the voltage across the load so in this case suppose we're going to simulate RL load so double click here change it to zero double click on this power supply change it to zero click on the resistor 100 ohms click on inductor for example 1.1 Henry then we can close it and run the simulation double click here we can see the simulation result this is basically output current this is dot rectifier output voltage this is the voltage across the diet and this is input current in order to see the effect of load current on input current we can change the resistance value decrease the resistance value in order to have almost pure inductive load so if we change it to for example 1 ohm and change the inductance value to 10 millihenry then we can run the simulation again so now double click here we can auto scale so here we can see that the load current is almost continuous and this is input current so here we can see that the input current is like a square wave and basically at high power this square wave has significant harmonics that means in power system we inject significant harmonics this is a three phase half wave dodge rectifier here we can see that we have phase C, phase B, phase A and three dots and this is the load so basically we have RLC together with battery we can measure the voltage across the load and also this is current through the load we can measure the voltage phase voltage and also voltage across diode 1 in order to simulate we can run the simulation but the point is that we can change the parameters for example here when we double click double click on component so here we can see that there is no capacitor in the circuit because C equals to 0 L is 1 millihenry R is 100 ohms and DC voltage is we can change it to 0 
So one possibility is here we can change the inductance value to zero just to simulate pure resistive load. Then we can run the simulation. Now double click on the scope. So this is three phase. Here we can see that each phase can conduct for 120 degree. That's different than three phase full wave rectifier. This is the voltage across diode one and this is the current through each phase.